What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. As you can see right here, I have a Subaru STI. This is White Wing STI. If you guys uh, haven't seen his channel, well, this is his car. I am going to actually be parting out this car. So like a lot of you guys know, uh, with Subarus, when you start to do high horsepower builds, even just modifying them a bit, uh, you usually have issues. So this car had the original block, lifted a head, it was making, I don't know, something around like 330 wheels, something like that. Um, then he went with an IAG, tough block, uh, stage two tough block, and you know, did a full rebuild. On that, it was pushing right around 400 wheel, but it had an issue with the uh, rings not seating correctly. And when that happened, uh, the car was basically sitting for well over a year. And in that process, um, you know, the engine had to be rebuilt again. It got sent back to IAG and uh, they sent it back. They had to redo the rings and the car is now back again here in present day. So um, basically he's done like three more track days in the car and since then just kind of over it um, at a certain point you just kind of get over these cars these uh the stis you know they like to really push uh going through corners with the handling that's just characteristics of the all-wheel drive system and wants to switch it up so he is probably thinking about doing the bmw route just like i did so either maybe an e46 m3 or e36 m3 we got a ride with sean check out sean's channel sean s54 we got to ride in his uh s54 equipped uh e36 m or no e46 m3 track car and that thing was freaking sick i was super impressed rodell was super impressed and it kind of just both got us on like we need that car so anyways uh here it is I'm gonna go cruise it around the block real quick and uh, just kinda, I don't know, just do a little like a little bit of driving and then park it and uh, I'm gonna start ripping stuff off it and I'll kinda do a build, reverse build breakdown. What we'll do is a, a build teardown. We'll call it a build teardown because we're gonna be parting it out and I'm gonna be ripping off all these parts and I can physically show them to you, so. Yeah, let's go. And before you guys say, oh, it's the tune, oh, it's not done right, and all that stuff, um, this pretty much happens to all Subarus. If you don't believe it, you don't know enough people that own Subarus, and you uh, haven't had enough friends in the Subaru community. I guarantee that uh, most of the people you know have gone through at least three engines. On my 2014 Subaru WRX, I went through three engines. I didn't talk about it at the time because I did get those engines repaired. Um, and my first one, I went 45K, got rod knock. Second one, it uh, actually kind of blew up at autocross. Well, it didn't blow up, but it um, crashed all the valves. So I had to get a second block that was 7,000 miles after a, uh, after a fresh rebuild. And then after that, well, I just got done with it. Same sort of situation. Um, I, you know, I left it stock and I, I traded it in and I parted out all my stuff. That's why you will see lots and lots of people parting out uh, Subarus on Craigslist and well that's just that's just the name of the game um, you've seen Clint go through multiple motors David Mudrick he had that 11 second uh, uh, Hawkeye you know that one went through at least uh, three engines um, gosh a bunch of my friends all my other friends that have Subarus three four engines it's just it's a common thing so yeah rod knocks huge that's a, that's a giant issue with these uh, EJ motors. Um, Ringland failure, yes. I've seen my buddy had a 2015 Subaru STI, 800 miles on the block. It blew up, Ringland failure, at autocross. Like, I saw it physically, okay guys? Brand new car, off the lot, at autocross. Pumping out smoke, barely running. So, it definitely is an issue. It's not that like, I mean, okay, people say, Oh, it's the tune and oh, it's the you know, oh, it's it's how you abuse it. They all blow up If they don't you're you're lucky basically, but it it will eventually blow so anyways, let's go cruise this thing around That cold start No, everybody loves that cold start. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. This has the uh exhaust on it so I'm gonna be taking all that stuff off so guys I want to get a quick uh, 
rundown of the car real quick. So uh, this car has an external wastegate. It's a turbo swap. Um, you know, it's got a big turbo on it. Um, it's got a whole bunch of goodies. It's got headers, catalyst downpipe, external gated, cob exhaust. So it's decently, uh, decently quiet, which is kind of nice, you know, because it's uh, cruisable. And then when you get into the uh, external gate, like get a little you guys hear that a little bit you know it gets a little bit of boosties and uh makes a cool bit of external wastegate noises which it really gets up and goes um it kind of kicks in right around 3 3200 rpm from what i can tell which is a, a really usable um boost range you know that's kind of where you want to be so this car was set up for you know daily driving and track driving so let's Let's give her a little bit of beans. Oh yeah, it feels good, it feels good. All right, I like it, it's fun. It's a good little ride, pretty sweet. So I don't wanna get this thing too awful hot because I gotta take the exhaust off in a second here because uh, it's got a carbon fiber drive shaft and all that type of stuff. So let's uh, get back to the house and well, we're gonna, we're gonna take care of some things. So I'm back, thing's a fun little ride. It's super fast, it's a, uh, it's, you know, it's a really good car. It's, they're fun, but uh, they have their drawbacks too, like every car. So what I'm gonna do right now is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take off, well, I gotta let it cool down, but I think I'm gonna first work on suspension. So this has Olin dampers, Olin, Olin coil overs on it. So uh, those are up for sale, I think. Uh, th most all of these parts are gonna be up for sale. So it has Olin's on it. It also has a bunch of Cusco parts down below. Nice uh, blue uh, chassis stiffness, like chassis uh, bracing for the front subframe and for the rear subframe. And then also it's got a rear sway bar on it and it has an anti-lift kit. I'm not gonna take the anti-lift kit off cause that's just a pain in the butt. Uh, it's really not worth it. So I think right now I'm gonna do that and then it also has a carbon fiber drive shaft. So I'll drop the exhaust and get that stuff all out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of the stock parts out of the car and uh, just kind of lay those out right now. So also, as you can see, it's got a bunch of the goodies in here right now. It's got the uh, carbon fiber steering wheel, so that's gonna be up for sale. It's got a, a bunch of gauges and all that. Fancy little boot down there, which is a uh, pretty cool looking. <laughs> and we got all the stock parts in the back of here. So actually this thing fit most of the stuff pretty damn well, in my opinion. I'm uh, I'm pretty surprised at how much stuff was able to fit back here. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start taking this stuff out, figure out what I got, and then rip off the wheels and uh, put the stock struts back on. All right guys, so we got a bunch of stuff here to uh, replace. Those are the uh, LED lights in the front. Um, this is the uh, intake, intercooler, up pipe we got the struts over there we had rear control arms we got fire extinguisher that doesn't need to do anything blow off valve or bypass valve we got the stock intake manifolds the stock exhaust stock uh cross bracing and rear cross bracing the stock down pipe and a stock steering wheel so quite a bit of things oh stock drive shaft stock uh rear um what we got over here rear stuff rear uh rear struts so we're gonna up in the air and uh ready to get these wheels pulled off i guess i'm gonna start probably start off with taking off this rear diffuser i think somebody already bought this but uh i'm gonna take that off the car the thing has lots of nice parts on it it's a very very clean bill if you guys haven't checked out the build i recommend to uh check out rodell's channel i'll put like a little eye up there in the corner for more links but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh take this thing off here so I can get some access. So getting the exhaust off right now, um, I was able to get off that diffuser and uh, now I'm gonna take off the sway bar and that Cusco uh, rear. Man, I have to say these Grim Speed mounts, uh, they are a pain in the ass to take off. Definitely make sure to use penetrating lube if you're uh, ever gonna take these things off because it makes a night and day difference. It's really the only way to get them off. Got that little Y pipe on the STI out. I'm taking off some uh, Cusco, Cusco goodies right now. We got that sick looking rear uh, subframe brace. 
All right, so I got the uh, rear sway bar off. So I'm gonna go actually put the uh, rear sway bar back on. Getting most of the rear suspension stuff done. Gotta put that uh, cross brace back on. I'm gonna grab these super nice uh, Olin's dampers out of here, the uh, rear ones. Ah, all right. Whew, look at those, so pretty. So these are gonna be for sale as well. Um, very nice, and well, I got a little bit loose on the uh, ride height, so anyways, very nice, high quality, German made Olin's dampers. Done with the uh, rear suspension down here, so I got the sway bar off, got the uh, rear coilovers off, put those back on, put the stock sway bar back on, took the stock brace off, took the diffuser off the rear and took the rally armor mud flaps off. So now I just gotta move on to the drive shaft. So as you guys can see under here, we got some some fancy, fancy carbon fiber drive shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull that off. Now when I take it out of the transmission, it can leak out a little bit of fluid. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and then I got the original one and I'm gonna put that back in. So got one more uh, fancy piece off this thing. We got the uh, carbon fiber drive shaft. This is a little bit nasty because when you take this out of the transmission, uh, the transmission will leak a little bit because this is a sealed piece, but yeah, look at that. Very, very nice from the uh, drive shaft shop. Now I am on to uh, the front and the front suspension. So we got a bunch of uh, Cusco goodness down there. You can see the blue. We got the Olin's in the front I got to take off. Uh, it's got the STI member of brakes. Um, it has the street pads in it right now. DBA rotors that have uh, seen better days, that's for sure. Um, you can see like a little bit of the cracking in there, which is good. That just means they've seen some abuse. Easy peasy. These things are nice. Uh, I like the way that rally armors flap. Um, I like that they're kind of malleable and whatnot. And uh, you can kind of bend them in the direction that you want to with the little thing. The rocks blocks, uh, I'm not a fan because I just don't like how stiff they are. I think they're just very, very cheaply made. And I think they should cost about five bucks. So these still seem like a quality part. Bust these coilovers loose real fast. Oh, wow, that was not very tight at all. It's not good. Well, not good in my opinion. That is also not the eccentric, so that's better that it's not the cam eccentric or the uh, the eccentric for the camber, but yeah, top one's the eccentric. I just, I missed it. I knew, I knew one of these is an eccentric. And by that, I mean that this is an oval. So when you spin it, it can adjust camber in and out. Yep, pretty cool. This is what they call a camber bolt. Coilovers on this car are like very, very simple to do. Like most cars. Um, well, my E30, a bit more involved. You gotta weld up stuff, but uh, most cars throwing coilovers is pretty freaking easy. These are some really nice Olin's coilovers, pretty much some of the fancier ones that you can get right here, so nice little setup. So I'm almost done with the suspension, then I'm gonna be moving on to the engine. I'm gonna be taking off the Grim Speed intercooler, uh, hopefully taking off the IAG uh, AOS, air oil separator, and then we got this uh, parent intake right here, or which one is this actually? This isn't parent, I, f I forget that. I'm forgetting the name of this intake right now, AEM? I think this is AEM. We got the parent uh, turbo inlet, I'm gonna try to take that off. And we got this uh, 23 in company or whatever, company 23 boost controller down there. Probably gonna take that off. We could take this little shiny guy off right here. Um, take the uh, Garrett, what kind of turbo is even on here? I think it's a Garrett, something, whatever that thing is. Uh, yeah, whatever the turbo is on here, I totally forget what size turbo it is, so forgive me guys, I don't remember. I'll uh, look that up in a while. Then we got the PTP lava turbo blanket. We're gonna have to take that off. And we got the turbo smart blow off valve and an external wastegate down there, plus some headers. So basically a lot more work. I'm almost done with the suspension. I think I'm gonna quit for today uh, with all the drive line components. So 
basically everything on the rear, all the suspension, and then I'll probably finish up with the front. And then do this tomorrow. All right guys, so day number two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take off all this uh, fancy looking Cusco stuff under here. You guys can see all that blue. Uh, I may dig into the downpipe and turbo tonight and intercooler, not quite sure yet. But overall, it's been a lot of work so far, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bust that stuff out uh, before all the mosquitoes come out, because mosquitoes have been coming out and it's only like, it's February, which is, well, which is weird. Usually it's kind of cold, but it's like, it's been super nice out, it's like spring. So anyways, um, yeah, let's rip that stuff off. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and rip this stuff off. guys so I am back at it again I uh, haven't worked on this in a couple of days I'm gonna go ahead and rip this uh, blow off valve off real quick then I'm gonna take off the intake that way I can get to the intake uh, inlet right here the inlet pipe this parent one right here and then we can finally get the turbo off the up pipe and the external wastegate so that is all down there I'm gonna start working on this not really gonna break it down probably just do a little time-lapse thing again because um, there's a lot of stuff on this car and I just really can't go into detail about this because uh, I kind of trying to just get it done. I'm not really trying to do like an explanation thing. So let's get down to it. Let's get ripping this apart. guys so I am pretty much wrapping up uh, doing all the stuff on this car um, I still got to take off the oil cooler on this car it has a Mishimoto oil cooler uh, I'm still putting the turbo back together but uh, as you guys know if you if you put a highly modified car back to stock it takes quite a bit of time so I've kind of missed out on uh, one of the videos that I normally do this week so uh, yeah this is why uh, it's a lot of work and I've just been working on it after work but anyways guys uh, yeah in result, I know you guys are really gonna hate this video, all you Subaru fans, all the people that don't really like Subarus and you'll, or that have owned Subarus and don't own them anymore. This is probably uh, one of the main reasons is uh, they break and things happen. And if you've had more than, I'd say two engines, which if you're a normal Subaru owner, you probably have. Uh, usually on your third one, you're usually just kind of uh, getting tired of breaking stuff. So if you're smart, you get out early uh after maybe engine number two i don't know and uh yeah you move on to bigger and better things so rodell is probably going to go with an e46 m3 so i'm excited to see that um i also want one of those cars i think they're an awesome daily driver they're an awesome track car they're just an all-around uh really good high performance driving machine bmw right the ultimate driving machine or whatever but yeah they're just uh really cool so anyways guys uh Leave a like, leave a dislike, whatever. Leave a comment, fanboy out on uh, Subaru stuff if you guys love Subarus because I know there's gonna be a ton of uh, Subaru haters on this video, but you know, one day, this will be you. That's all I have to say. Happened to me. All right, later guys, and wrench on.